emails sent to me in response to rant number 35. Yes, apparently there's a whole pile of people out there who think they can provide me with examples of an increase in information in the genetic code. That's right, some cited things like nylon A's and site trays as though that somehow is an example of an increase in information. I'll deal with those in rant number 80. And in rant number 79, I'll deal with the idea that somehow errors in the genetic code can increase information. But for this rant, I want to address the idea that somehow changes over time can add information to the genetic code. Now, Dr. Jonathan Sanford, co-inventor and discoverer of the Gene Gun, wrote a book, Genetic Entropy and the Mystery of the Genome. So what I'm going to give you today is a synopsis of what he says in that book. You see, evolution is supposed to gain information in the genetic code by mutations or errors in your DNA. The DNA, of course, is the blueprints on how to build you. Now, at best, it's arguable that there are such things as beneficial mutations. Now, these would be errors in your genetic code that somehow give you a benefit. But for the sake of this rant, and to be as kind to the evolutionary theory as possible, I'm going to assume that beneficial mutations do in fact exist. However, there are plenty of examples of mutations in the genetic code that are lethal to the organism. They kill it. The list goes on and on and on. I could give you kinds, all kinds of examples. However, for the sake of this rant, and to be as kind to the evolutionary theory as possible, I am going to assume that lethal mutations do not exist. Now, most of the mutations in your DNA are going to be either neutral, near neutral, or detrimental to you. It's like reading a book and finding spelling mistakes in it. Small spelling mistakes, you can kind of gloss over, you can figure it out, and you can still make sense of the book. However, if one of those spelling mistakes changes the meaning of a word, then that could be described as, say, a near-neutral mutation. It affects the reading, but doesn't destroy the book. And then, of course, there's detrimental ones. This would be spelling mistakes in a book, for example, that completely reverses the meaning of a specific word. It makes it very hard to understand the book, but the book is still readable. Now, we all get mutations in our DNA throughout our lifetime. Say, probably a hundred. Nobody really knows. Nobody really knows how many beneficial mutations there are, because really, those beneficial mutations are arguable at best. So nobody's been counting. However, some of the estimates are maybe that one in 1,000 of the mutations you receive are beneficial. For the sake of this rant, and to be as kind to the evolutionary model as possible, we are going to assume it's actually one in 100. So let's assume, then, that you get a beneficial mutation. Miracle of miracles. However, with that beneficial mutation, you have also gained 99 neutral, near neutral, or detrimental mutations. Now, you can't just pass on the beneficial mutation to your offspring. When you have children, you give them all of your DNA or none of it. You either have offspring or you don't. Therefore, your child is going to inherit the one beneficial mutation and 99 neutral, near neutral, or detrimental mutations. So now your child has children of its own. But in their lifetime, they also inherited 99 neutral, near neutral, and detrimental mutations. But they also gained that beneficial mutation. They passed that on to their children. So by the time your grandchild has a child, they're passing on 297 neutral, near neutral, or detrimental mutations and three beneficial mutations. Think of it like a tape recording. If you record from one tape to the other, then the quality of the copy isn't exactly as good as the original. Still very usable, still very watchable, it's a nice video. But it's not quite as good a quality as the original. Now take that video, copy it again to another tape, you now have a third generation, it's not quite as good as that copy, and it is certainly not as good as the original. But now take that copy and make a copy of it. And make a copy of it. And make a copy of it. And eventually, the quality is so bad that the tape is unintelligible. So think of this boat as your DNA. You know, over your lifetime, you'll accumulate a few errors in your DNA. Not a big deal, you know? And they're only little holes. The boat stays floating. It's not the end of the world. You pass on those errors to your children, and they accumulate a few errors over their lifetime. Afternoon, officer. Yes, I'm, I'm aware of the boating regulations in Ontario, yes. I'm shooting holes in the boat. 
Okay, so you don't care that I'm shooting holes in the boat as long as I have a safety rope, a bailing device, a whistle, and a life jacket. All right. Anyway, as I was saying before we were so rudely interrupted, so those children then pass on their errors to their children who also accumulate a few errors in their lifetime. Again, not a big deal. You can go on for this like this for quite some time before you really have a problem with the boat. Of course, if evolution has been going on for hundreds of millions of years, then you have hundreds of millions of years of accumulated error. errors in your DNA over millions of years, evolution can't explain how the boat stays afloat. It also can't explain where the boat came from in the first place. You can also start to see why the Russian geneticist Kondyshov named his article, Why Aren't We Dead 100 Times Over? If evolution's been going on for hundreds of millions of years, we should be dead. The evidence from genetics shows that we are de-evolving. We're deteriorating, not gaining information, we are losing it. Evolution must violate all of these known observations from the science of genetics. Not only is it the exact opposite of evolution, it also shows we have not been around for millions of years, because otherwise our DNA would have deteriorated so much, it would be unreadable, and we would be dead. This lines up with the scriptures, which says that God created us perfect originally, and because of the sin of mankind and our rebellion against our Creator, we are now deteriorating. We are getting sicker and sicker as time goes on. It is the opposite of evolution. Now, I happen to know who that Creator is, personally. His name is Jesus Christ. Perhaps you should get to know him today. See you later.